Hello everyone, my name is Pixel Rift, and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Yes, it's a Survival Guide episode today and not a fake out and a snapshot video, although nobody was faked out by the intro yesterday. It was basically in the title for you already, but I started the video over here and I really wanted to start this video over here as well so that you can see the scope of the mountains that we are now building kind of coming into view. I've cranked my render distance up to 24 chunks and I have a feeling that this is going to almost be my new default around here as long as I don't get too framesy because wow, really, really cool seeing the view of the mountain from a distance. And that is not all snow, that is just render fog as we get further in towards the mountain. You will see that it is all stone, give or take the ridges of grass and dirt we've been putting in. I'm super happy with how this is coming together, folks. I have to do a lot more work on it later today. And once again, this is going to be continuing mainly on live streams, simply because I don't really feel like there's much more mileage to be gotten out of tutorials for how to build a mountain. You can kind of just get the idea. It's a lot of stone placement and stuff like that. But today we're going to follow up on the tutorial we put out for this cobblestone generator in the last survival guide episode. And today I'm going to work on putting together a collection mechanism and an automatic smelter for it. Unfortunately for me, that is going to necessitate a trip back through the nether to my base because for a start, I need to repair my elytra a little bit, but also I need to go and get some bamboo because we're going to be fueling this automatic smelter with a renewable fuel source in the form of some zero tick bamboo generators. I have a feeling that's going to be the best thing to do going forward, simply because I don't want to spend too much time gathering and crafting fuel from other sources. For example, of course, we could use kelp blocks, uh, which are, you know, very easily renewable thanks to the fact that kelp can be grown in the kelp farm that we have back at the base. We could use lava if we wanted to, but you can't really stack lava buckets, even though it will smelt 100 blocks at a time. You can't really store a huge amount of it at once. And coal blocks would probably be the best fuel source to have, given that a stack of 64 multiplied by the 80 items they smelt per block would keep you going for a very long time, but that requires mining an enormous amount of coal. So instead, what I thought I would do is start up a new bamboo generating thing, kind of like what we had inside the XP farm, which is out of commission and it has been for a little while thanks to the fact that I didn't really balance this all that well and also the farm stopped working when I unloaded some chunks. <laughs> but I think what we'll do is come over here, grab some bamboo and make a bamboo generator that we can switch on and off anytime we want to generate some stone or we can preserve our ears the rest of the time because these zero tick bamboo generators, they're very noisy. Combine that with the TNT explosions that are going to be happening at the same time. My word, it's going to be loud down there. But luckily, we will be further up in the world taking care of some building on the mountain. Hopefully we won't have to listen to it all that much. I also need to top up some supplies to my redstone box while I'm here because we are a little bit low on pistons and we'll be using a fair amount of those, mostly sticky pistons actually, in the bamboo farm itself. So yeah, let's grab all of the ones that we've got in here. We'll add those to the shulker box and we'll replenish our stores here next time we're back at the base. For now, I think that should be everything I need to get this cobblestone generator started. I guess we can always take a trip back here if we need to, but the next thing I'm gonna do is stop by the zombie pigman farm just so I can repair the elytra and have full durability on that. Don't wanna drop in lava on my way to or from the base, so I'll do that off camera and I'll meet you guys back over at the ski resort. Let's go. So the first thing we're going to do is dig out the area around here just to make sure that we have enough room to lay down a pit full of water that all of the items are going to be funneled into a central section here. And as you can see, the TNT blasts have actually been destroying some of the grass around here, which is a surprise because I thought having the obsidian there would mean that it wouldn't. But for some reason, yeah, the grass is just weak enough in terms of blast resistance that it's getting taken out. So what we're going to do is hollow out this section here, probably lay down some sort of stone brick or maybe wood area around here with water streams on all sides that's going to funnel everything down into a central collection area. We probably won't put hoppers right there though because the water streams we're going to set up underneath could just carry it straight to all of the auto smelters without the need for installing a bunch of hoppers to slow the process down. And ideally it's all going to end up in a single hole down the center of here so all of the water streams are going to end up 
in this spot. I figure if we count eight blocks in each direction, that's just going to be the length of a water stream naturally. Or alternatively, we could have everything flow down to the center and just put a fence gate or something here to block the water flow and make sure items got over here okay. But remember, the water is going to shield all of the material down here from the blast of the TNT anyway, so we don't need to worry about any of this breaking once it has the water streams in place. Even so, I think I'm probably going to stick with that eight block length around the outside leading to this hole down here. This whole endeavor has been complicated slightly by the fact that I covered over a ravine here, and I have a feeling we are probably going to have to build some of this through the ravine, but that should be fine. We should just be able to, you know, block over it a couple of blocks down in there. Not a big deal. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, the outside of our basin of water is going to be there. <laughs> I think underneath there, we're actually going to be building part of the smelter. And there we go. That is our collection pit all the way done. Basically, anything that we throw from any point into these water streams is all going to spiral around and then go down the plug hole in the center. And this section here at the corners, each of these four corners has this kind of stair step pattern, is basically just to stop the water forming infinite water sources on the inside of here. Otherwise, we would have to enlarge the collection tray even further. But I think think I'm pretty happy with this. I like the fact that it all just spirals down the center there, but everything drops into a one wide gap, which is perfect for the collection water stream that's going to take it down to the auto smelters. And that, my friends, is where the fun begins. We're going to need a pretty sizable area dug out underneath this, because not only is it going to provide the water stream that carries the items to the furnaces, but the furnaces themselves are going to have to be fueled by a couple of zero tick bamboo farms, and that is going to take a little bit of building down here. So I think what I will probably do rather than dig all of this out manually right now is go ahead and grab my beacon from over there in the mountains where I was using it to farm all of the stone that we've been using to build this mountain biome so far. Wait, 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 wait. I don't even need to go over there because I have a beacon box and we've actually saved a few things in here, including some emerald blocks that we can use. Whoa, as a beacon base, if I don't get attacked by baby zombies first. Yeah, I really need to light up this platform a little bit better. It doesn't help that we have a giant mountain overhead, so this is going to be a mob haven even during the day, but at night like this, it's probably even worse. So <laughs> the least I can do, I think, is light this up a little bit more. Then, of course, we have the problem of me having to build this beacon base a little bit further away because, once again, <laughs> the mountain is going to prevent the beacon beam from having access to the sky above. So I'm actually building this a little bit out of the way. It should be enough to be within range, though. It's got a 50 block radius, so that should not be too bad. So I've dug out this room about eight blocks down from the surface and we're actually facing away from that area where the ravine was. I figured it would be more convenient to do things that way. This is an eight block deep tube that the uh, items are eventually going to fall down. We'll probably just block off the rest of this as well. And then they're going to fall into a water stream down here that's going to carry them towards the furnaces. The main reason for the eight blocks worth of headroom is so that we have enough room in here to place the bamboo generators that are going to be generating fuel for these furnaces. They need a little bit of height and building them underneath this thing seemed like a sensible thing to do but is also going to be a little bit tight for space so I figured we might as well get that figured out now so the water stream here is just going to lead along there and then the items are going to be aligned so that they will end up in the sides of the hoppers this is a concept that I touched on before uh, a little while ago but is kind of worth mentioning here say we have a water stream that goes over the top of all of these hoppers the items are going to have a kind of random position in this water stream they are going to be carried around in the water stream a little bit depending on how fast they were traveling as they came down here they might end up getting caught in the center of the hopper where the hitbox is a little bit lower and that can lead to items jamming up and not getting to the rest of these hoppers so what we're actually going to do is a trick that has been pioneered i think by il mango and a lot of people bring this up we are going to use sea pickles to align the items against the side of a block so that they end up going along the edge of a hopper there. Those two pixels basically are the area that they end up traveling on as they go on a water stream down these hoppers. Now, I am going to grab some packed ice out of here because, of course, once we have a set of sea pickles here, we're going to waterlog those and the water needs to travel that way and not that way. So we're going to grab some packed ice, place that on the last spot here, and then we're going to make a fence gate that's going to go there and that's going to allow the items to go through while blocking the water. People also do that with pressure plates. You can block the flow of water using pressure plates if you want items to just slide over the top of them because that doesn't slow the items down on the 
ice, but then uh, pressure plates can potentially power blocks and that might lock some of the hoppers around here. Not these ones, but if there was a hopper adjacent to it, it would lock that. I find fence gates just a little easier to work with, basically. So we're going to have a fence gate here opened up so that the items can travel through there. Our sea pickles are going to be on there and I'll need to go and grab some of those because I do not have them with me right now. And then the rest of this section here is going to be closed fence gates, basically so that the items have something to rest against as they travel down here. You can also use glass panes for this, I believe, but fence gates seem like a decent width to me. You can't put full blocks here though, because once the items hit the sea pickles, they're going to be right on the edge of this block and they would get caught on a full block because the item's hitbox was ever so slightly over onto this set of blocks here. So you need something that is not the full width of a block to align them down here. People used to use chests for this, but sea pickles allow the whole thing to be a little more compact. Each of these hoppers is of course going to be inputting the cobblestone that gets brought down from this tube into these furnaces down here. And we'll need an extra space to put the fuel in on the side here. It doesn't have to be facing that way. Of course, the furnace block can be placed in any direction. It just means that the fuel has to come in from one of the four sides. And we're going to do that here, where it's actually going to align the fuel input so that it does exactly the same thing, aligning the fuel with uh, sea pickles and just having this whole thing blocked off from the top like that so the input line and the fuel line do not end up mixing. So the idea here is that we're going to start with a module of six furnaces. We have six hoppers going in and a seventh hopper on the end here, which is potentially going to output into a chest. Or alternatively, if it turns out this farm is producing more cobblestone than these six furnaces can handle, we can have the cobblestone drop down into another water stream and that's going to continue on to another module of these furnaces. But I've figured it out in creative that six furnaces is the amount we can supply comfortably with fuel from two zero zero tick bamboo farms. That's the plan at least. Now I'm going to go and grab some more fireworks from the ender chest and we're going to go and get some sea pickles because that is the vital ingredient here that we are currently missing and with that I can demonstrate exactly how this water stream thing works. Hey folks, welcome back. Had to go all the way back to my base to get sea pickles because I have no idea where a coral reef is around here. But the idea, like I was saying, is that we put three sea pickles down there, which in incidentally provides a little bit of light. But what it's actually going to do is align the items with the edge of the sea pickle hitbox. You'll see there, if you can just about make that out, let me actually use my FOV to zoom in a little bit so you can see there are very faint lines around the outside of where the sea pickles are. And that wire frame shows you the edge of where the items that fly into this water stream are going to end up aligning themselves. I should really install Logical Geek Boy's Zoom mod one of these days before Optifine comes out at least. Anyway, <laughs> what we're gonna do is throw a couple of items into this water stream as an example. Let's do that with a little bit of regular stone here. That's gonna end up in the hoppers, but oh well, I'll fish it out in a second. And you'll see what happens if I throw those down there is that they align on the edge of that sea pickle box momentarily and then they end up getting pushed along the edge of these hoppers very very slowly. I'll throw some in from here you should be able to see the same effect happening once this hopper fills up of course then the items will scoot along to the next set of hoppers and so on and so forth until all the hoppers are full. We're going to be doing this with the cobblestone we're also going to be doing exactly the same thing down here with the fuel input line coming from the bamboo farm. Now give me that smooth stone back I think I need it <laughs> and that's actually going to be a really decent way of making sure that the items distribute well, that they don't get caught up in any of the hopper hitboxes at all, and that they are slowed down enough that they're not going to spill over to the next hopper. So the furnaces are going to activate basically in order. You're only going to use this first set of furnaces here until the items get pushed down a little bit further, until that hopper fills up and the next hopper needs to receive items. That's going to be how it works. And so I think underneath here, we need to install a fuel line that is going to go in the same direction, just so we can make sure that these first furnaces are always the ones that get fueled up first. So for that, I think we are going to build ourselves a bamboo farm over in this direction. Hopefully, once again, we won't run into any ravines or features that are going to get in the way. A little bit of a cave here, but nothing to worry about. I can always just block that off. I think we should have enough space anyway. So over here, we're going to be building two zero tick bamboo farms back to back that end up outputting into the same water stream. The idea being that when we activate both of them, they're going to provide all of the fuel necessary to fuel these furnaces. So I'm going to whip up one of those. We've done these in previous videos before, but for those who need a bit of a refresher course, tune into this section specifically. We're going to start off with a block here with two redstone torches on either side 
like so, and I think we'll need something to grow the bamboo on. Dirt should be fine. Either dirt or sand is what bamboo is going to grow on, so we'll put a piece of bamboo in the center there, and that is going to need to grow one stage so that it's no longer just a bamboo shoot, so it becomes a piece of bamboo cane, and that is what's going to be pushed around, allowing it to zero tick, which is going to force it to grow a stage every so often. Uh, oh, yeah, my redstone box is over here already. We're going to grab some sticky pistons from inside of here, and we want one of those facing that way into this block here. We need to leave a space on this side so the other sticky piston is going to be facing into that block with a, an air gap here. And then we're going to set up a couple of blocks that are going to have redstone dust on behind these torches and a block there and a block there. Once we place the redstone dust there and there, these two pistons are going to shuttle the dirt back and forth and that's going to cause the bamboo here to grow a stage. We're going to zero tick those sticky pistons by having pistons up here, oh, not quite there, there, firing on all sides of the pistons. We're going to place all four of those for now. If we see any of them not working, we can remove them from the circuit, and then we will need a means for the whole system to detect when the bamboo grows so that we can push it using an observer, and I think, yeah, just a sticky piston probably at the top here. So we're going to have the observer facing downwards onto that block that's eventually going to have some redstone dust on it. We want a block on top of that. We'll use this polished andesite here, and then a sticky piston there. So every time the observer pulses because the redstone dust down there has activated, it's going to send a signal to that block, activate the piston, and the piston is going to push the second piece of this bamboo forward. When it does that, we will collect it in a hopper that's going to be in front of this, feeding down into a dropper, and the dropper is going to deposit all of the bamboo into a water stream. There we go, hopper on there, and we got our growth stage. Perfect. So now, anytime we activate this, it should start spewing out bamboo and collecting it in this hopper to get sucked into the dropper. Then, what we are going to do is have something else in front of this, probably another module of the bamboo farm, but we could also do that temporarily by placing a piece of redstone dust on this block here that's going to tick the dropper forcing it to spit out the bamboo each time so if you followed the building process all we should now need to do is place a piece of redstone dust there a piece of redstone dust here and that should start the zero ticking process and then a piece of redstone dust here that will tick the dropper forcing it to spit out all of the bamboo it is collecting now, for the sake of making sure that we can contain all of the bamboo and we don't lose any of it in this process, I'm probably going to build some blocks around the top there so that the bamboo doesn't fly out in different directions. But it does look like we are getting rid of that bamboo pretty much as soon as we receive it, which is good, and that's going to end up in a water stream feeding down into these furnaces. Now, so that we can turn this on and off, I'm going to attach a lever to that block there for now. There's, we're actually going to have to get around the back of this machine to switch it off, so I'll probably set up up a lever on this side as well there so that we can make sure that gets turned off and let's have a quick look at the machine in action so we can see which of those pistons we can remove looks like we're not getting any action from that one there so we can take that one out and you know what i think we'll remove this one on the top here as well yeah both of those two lower pistons are firing which means it's going to be zero ticking the bamboo nice and easy all we have to do now is just build up around the top and here is the fun part for our next trick we're going to be building another module of this bamboo farm directly in front of it and there are more efficient ways of chaining a huge amount of these things together but i'm just going to do two for the moment and that should be all we need to fuel all of these furnaces so i'm going to get that set up we're also going to set up a water stream that's going to take the fuel to these furnaces down here and when we come back we should be ready to set up our output chests Hey folks, welcome back. Before we get back down into the cobblestone smelter, I just wanted to give you a bit of an update on the state of the mountain because I've been doing a bit more work on it today and I've started planting some temporary trees down here on these lower slopes. And I really feel like that's adding to the overall picture, so it's kind of reaffirmed my desire to put some trees on the lower slopes of the mountain as we start to landscape this area out here. I think having some custom trees is going to be best in the long term, but for now, I really like having these spruce leaves around the place, mainly because I've mostly just been looking at grey stone <laughs> for the most part, so it's kind of nice to have those trees out there providing a little bit of green and brown and really contributing to the picture that this mountain is starting to present. But wow, what a lot of progress we have made and what a lot we still have left to do. Okay, so back down to the bamboo and cobble generators, and unfortunately we have had a little bit of spillage here and there. It's not been 
too much. Thankfully, a lot of the bamboo exits this before it gets stuck on the side there. So we've only had like three or four here and there pop out of the machine. Yeah, that's five total. That's not too bad. And we can probably build a bit more of a case around this or even flood the rest of this that isn't part of the redstone components with the water here, just so everything ends up funneling down into this water stream. Probably wouldn't be too bad of an idea, actually. But here we have the water stream coming out of the bamboo farm. And this second module that I built in front of it is literally just the same thing, but built three blocks over. Basically one block, two blocks, and then the next piston goes in for the second module of the, uh, the, the bamboo farm. And the idea here is that having a block in the middle there is actually ticking this uh, dropper. So every time the redstone dust pulses on this side, it's actually powering that and this dropper gets its power from there. So if you turn on this one at the front, that's one bamboo generator because it's got the redstone dot there that's ticking the dropper. And then if you turn on this one at the back as well, I feel like the dropper only gets powered if you have this one on as well. So kind of a good idea to uh, keep that in mind. If you have one redstone dot here, unfortunately that becomes a line of redstone instead of a single dot of redstone and the uh, shuttling back and forth of the dirt over here with the zero ticking part of the farm no longer works. So unfortunately, yeah, it's it's one or both, but you turn this one on if you want a little bit of bamboo, you turn them both on if you want a lot of bamboo. And the bamboo is currently, there's a rabbit in here. Why? <laughs> Why is there a rabbit? Can we let the rabbit out? I think we should probably let this rabbit... Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Get out of my mechanism. Okay. So as I was saying, this whole setup, that's probably why there's a rabbit in here, to be honest. It's just been bouncing around. The mechanism probably fell in from above. The uh, the whole thing has been going pretty well. The thing I have discovered is that the cobblestone generator, much as people have decried its inefficiency, is actually producing a lot more cobblestone than it's able to smelt with this small number of furnaces. So what I'm planning on doing is introducing another row of furnaces underneath this and probably even that is not going to be enough because compared to the amount of bamboo this whole setup is going through it is smelting very few pieces of cobblestone i mean it's it's four bamboo for one piece of cobblestone but these are furnaces not blast furnaces or smokers they cannot do stuff particularly fast so i think the thing to do is to expand this into another set of furnaces because right now i had to add this cobble output chest onto the end here and i've been feeding those back into the hoppers occasionally but then this runs out of bamboo quite quickly as it's smelting its way through the contents of those hoppers and as you can see the output chest is getting a fair amount of stone but not nearly as much as the cobblestone output chest is that's just cobblestone overflow so i think what we're going to do is add another row of furnaces underneath this maybe even feed it from the same bamboo line but i think we'll probably end up building a second bamboo generator the main problem right now is the sheer amount that my frames drop when all of this stuff is running in tandem because i've had the cobblestone generator running i've had this running and all of the item entities flowing around these water streams reduces my fps to about 12 <laughs> when i'm around here if i'm not recording it'll probably be a little bit higher but aside from that yeah this whole thing is a little bit intensive luckily when i walk away if i end up doing some stuff up on the mountain and i'm not looking in this direction so my client isn't Loading in all of the lighting updates and all of the pistons moving and all of the stuff exploding and stuff like that it actually becomes bearable again and while i'm up here building on top of the mountain this thing can run in the background without really impacting my overall experience so there is hope yet for this whole setup i just need to expand the set of furnaces that we have down here to include more than just six Alternatively, another approach could be just to place cacti at the end of each of these two water streams. One there, with the sand on that block there so that it wouldn't interfere with this hopper line, and a cactus in place of this section of the chest here. And of course, while that's not going to output the cobble into a chest anymore, it's going to destroy any bamboo that comes in on the fuel input line, and then all you would need to do is add another cactus basically here, so that any cobblestone that made its way down here got destroyed on that cactus. And while obviously you're then producing redundant resources, because any of the cobblestone that is left over and any of the bamboo that is left over is just getting destroyed instead of a use being made out of it, it does prevent the problem of this thing producing too much resources and then all of the item entities piling up at the end here waiting to despawn. I don't know if it's going to produce those fast enough to cause an issue for me, but for some folks, having that amount of leftover floaty item entities for ages might be a problem. And I have a feeling that sometimes they don't despawn if more stuff is being added to the stack of item entities. It kind of refreshes the despawn timer on them. So that could potentially be a problem for folks as well. So it's kind of up to you whether you want to expand this into more furnaces and double your output, which is something I'm actually going to do because I'm 
sort of more interested in having more stone. Or alternatively, you can just get rid of the leftovers using a cactus or maybe some fire if you're happy setting a fire down here. You know, have it tip out into lava, whatever you need. Just something that's going to destroy all of the items so they're not just standing around in here taking up your vital FPS. However, the thing we need to be most concerned about is, was this able to produce enough stone that I was able to recoup all of the stone that I had spent while I was building up on the mountain? And the answer ultimately is yes. I'm probably not building it as fast as I could, but when I came down here, every single time I came down here, I was able to refresh my supplies in a single shulker box with whatever this thing had cooked up in the meantime, meaning that ultimately this could be a sustainable way of producing all of the stone that we need to build those mountains without ever having to go mining for it again. And that, I think, is mission accomplished. So I'm going to wrap this around into another set of furnaces, potentially with another bamboo farm set up down there, just in case this one isn't able to produce enough to go across all 12 of the furnaces that we're going to end up with. But I think this whole thing has been a success. And you know what? I feel like actually decorating the inside of this farm a little bit as well, because I leave too many of these things as these empty stone rooms. And I feel like it's going to look a lot nicer if we can come down here and this whole thing feels like it's machinery working under the ground in some sort of actual facility. So I'm going to go ahead and work on that, add in those furnaces, throw in a little bit of decoration around the place, and I'll see you guys on the other side. Well, folks, just to give you an idea of quite how noisy it is when this whole thing is running, we now have a second set of these bamboo auto farms happening. We have a second set of hoppers through which all of the items are actually going along that edge there, and they even get into these hoppers on the opposite side as well. So our other set of furnaces is actually next to the first set, just offset by one so that we can have the water stream start underneath there. And those should all be heading down towards that cactus. There we go. I needed to remove that stone block there. And those bamboo are all getting destroyed because all of these are now filled up with bamboo and the cobblestone is slowly filtering in. It's got about as far as this set of furnaces here where some extra bamboo has made its way into the system, but they should be filling up some of these hoppers at the end here as well. And our collection chest at the end of the line is gonna get the occasional bit of cobblestone. But if you look down here, we have almost filled up a large chest of stone and most of that has come in just while I've been working on decorating this room a little bit more. Still haven't done much with the ceiling because I'm worried about breaking these and then a bunch of debris from that getting into the fuel line here and ending up jamming up the hoppers or something like that. But I'm pretty happy with the wall design. We've just got some spruce and dark oak wood here and it is turning out an absolute treat. But that is where we're going to leave this episode with about 25 frames per second to my name. <laughs> kind of ridiculous, but harvesting all of the stone I could ever ask for. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. My name has been Pixorifs. Don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I will see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.